perfection. This is Big Daddy, and uh, welcome into the Top 40 Timeline video show from the Air Radio Network featuring myself, Big Daddy, and we have Leah Lywood, who looks like a librarian this week. She's the one that puts all the rock and roll trivia together, and of course, my uh, brother from another mother, <laughs> Lee Lakin. Uh, the, uh, uh, how you feeling there, bud? You all right? Uh, getting through to every day is different. That's right, man. That's all That's I right. can tell people. Every day is different, at least. So and it, it's not a librarian. I was told that you look smarter with glasses on. Yeah, but so. you'd look really sexy well, I must, with it. I must look really. I, I you would look really sexy glass. with with a piece of white tape right here in yeah. the middle. That's not happening. And that uh, <laughs> it's not happening. Oh well. No. At least, at least no. I tried. I but have white on the frame. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. We're brought to you this week by the Kenny Tosh Show, which is a brand new live show that we have featured on Radio GTA, and we started it off this week. And what we're asking you to do is join Kenny Tosh's Facebook group, and it's, a, it's an old-fashioned two hours every morning with Kenny, and what, what we're doing is uh, uh, taking requests like old school, you know, good morning, how you doing, talk about the weather. Everybody gets together on, on, on a, with the Facebook group, and that's how Kenny talks to the audience. Hot, hot flashing. I'll be all right there. I'm not hot flashing. I'm just no. dressed for the winter, and I'm inside. <laughs> so we've changed things around on GTA a little bit. At 6 o'clock every morning on Monday through Friday, now is the 60s at 6. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, Kenny from 7 to 9, and then I'm on from 9 to noon with My Insanity with the Western Morning Show from 9 a.m., which is 6 a.m. Pacific, see? You know, when you're dealing with time zones when, in, in radio, you, you can understand it's morning. It's 5, five o'clock somewhere. Somewhere. You know I mean? So you have to put... But that's... Uh, and we're very excited to have Kenny, who is a big Irish broadcaster, and uh, I was on United DJs with him, the huge station in England that we were on together. So uh, he's a very exciting guy, uh, a very informative, funny guy, and uh, he'll be there 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time every Monday through Friday. And so that's, that's the show was brought to you by basically Radio GTA and our new live Kenny Tosh show. So there you go. And, and that was a long way around that whole thing, listen to Radio GTA. That's right. Listen to radio in the I, morning. I, I, I want to take this one because I'm a huge big Han, Van Halen fan. Oh, when this right. all when this all transpired, um, uh, you know, David Lee Roth leaving the band, everybody thought Van Halen was done. They weren't going to carry on, and it became this soap opera that was kind of going on with Van Halen. Yeah. And um, it's funny because Van Halen fans, I find, are either Van Halen fans or they're not. It. it I know people that listen to a lot of music that came out around that same time, but they don't like Van Halen, or they really do. And it's just, and I'm one of those guys. Van Halen was one of my all time favorite bands, and I'm one of few drummers I know in the area that will actually play Van Halen music on the drums. And uh, so when this all happened, uh, their first release without David, Sammy came in. Many attributed the meaning of the song's title to the Newfound Balance album and compromise with the band. Eddie himself attests that while the song lyrics need a little interpretation, 5150 refers to uh, the building of his own recording studio that he built at his home, a venture which undertook uh, in order to gain control of the band's musical direction. The project was such a risk that Eddie was consistently told he was crazy. Now, 5150, I knew this when it came out, is the official police code for detaining an escaped psychiatric <laughs> patient and became fitting for the name of both the studio, the song, and the album. They should and write a book, uh, uh, members of Van Halen, just a book I, you about You know, themselves. there actually has been one written, um, and it was done right after Sammy came in. So there's a lot of uh, angst towards David written in that book well then uh, Eddie did actually write another one a couple of years before he passed and he explains what was going on and it was a bit of a, a shit show to say uh, but uh, you know a band like Van Halen is not just going to die and walk away uh, it wasn't going to happen it was a great mix with uh, with um, um, Sammy Sammy but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that go, oh, I'm, I'm a David Lee Roth and a Sammy sucks. And then the other one, oh, God, Sammy is a bastard. But those David are people sucks. that don't adjust. They don't, they yeah, don't go with change you know, well. They're used to the original, and that's what they like, right? But the thing I liked what Van Halen did was when Sammy came in, 
they didn't try to do the David Lee Roth thing. No. They adapted to Sammy and and it worked. Look how many albums they sold after yeah. that. It was crazy. So uh, yeah, you know, it, it was it was a crazy time. But uh, Eddie, we miss you, man, and we hope you're up there jamming with Jimmy. Am I doing the Alice Cooper story? Sure. I guess it's back Start to me back now, eh? and then we'll go boy, girl, boy, girl, like we usually do. Alice Cooper is a huge fan of The Simpsons, and in 2004 was asked to contribute a storyline for the edition of the Bongo Comics Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror, a special Monsters of Rock issue that also included stories plotted by Gene Simmons. And it's amazing how many things you see in The Simpsons that uh, turn up in later life to be true. Oh, uh, there's lots of them. Especially with 9-11 and, and there's the war. There's lots. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was and, a very well-written show, too. Do it's, it's, it's almost yeah. scary. Do the next one. Huh? Do the next one. Stop touching. I thought, am I touching your... Is that your knee there? My oh, hands God. are right here. You can attest to this, right? <laughs> See, ever since oh. I mentioned that little piece of tape on the middle of the glasses. <laughs> 1953, <laughs> Frankie Lane's Answer Me is banned by the BBC. Oh, big Who surprise. claims the lyrics, Answer Me, Lord, above our mocking Christian prayer. Also banned is Lee Lawrence's Crying in the Chapel. Crying I, I think, in the Chapel. I think the BBC where? has had more banned stuff than any other. Well, they had their head up their ass for so many years. I mean, I can say that. I used to work for them. But, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> used no, no, no. to. Key but word. You, but you know what? <laughs> no, the BBC is probably the most respected broadcaster in the world. Oh, I don't when, disagree when you look with at that. World news they were stuff. a little stringent for but, my liking, but... Well, yeah. Now, Al Jazeera isn't bad either, but I'm saying BBC, I don't mean to put them down in that way, but um, they're, they've got their priorities wrong sometimes, you mm. know? I mean... They were just a little stringent. Monster overall, Mash. They banned opinion, that but. because they thought that was... Uh, Oh, they've banned so many songs and, and artists. and. That is why Monster Mash was a, a hit in the 70s again, because it was re-released in Britain. Yeah. yeah. And it went right to number one. What yeah. does that tell the old BBC? There you go. Uh, 1960, days before he's elected as the 35th president of the United States, John F. Kennedy is a house guest at Frank Sinatra's home in Palm Springs. After Kennedy leaves, the guest room boasts a new bronze plaque that reads, John F. Kennedy slept here November 6th and November 7th, 1960. Wow. 1970, Aerosmith perform their first ever gig when they play at Nipook uh, Regional High School in Menden, Massachusetts. They go on to become the best-selling American rock band of all time, selling over 150 million albums worldwide. They also hold the record for the most gold and multi-platinum albums by an American group. And now uh, he's been charged with uh, something to do with uh, a woman has charged him with uh, some sexual encounter. Who's that? Steven? Steven Tyler, yeah. Well, I'm Happened sure there's probably year. a long list of them. There's just like, yeah, what's rock and roll? But you know what? And then there's. And then there's ones that they say happened and they never did because they just want their money. Well, so that, that, yeah, like a lot of them were groupies, man. And like, hello. And like you said, we were talking about off air. That you know, the '60s and '70s had a lot of controversy. There was a yeah. lot of stuff. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of partying, a lot of. It was a different time. Like, but even the today, music, oh, the, the, yeah. the doors that opened in so many vast. Isn't that funny how the right? old rock stars are yesterday? Today look like old grandmothers. Oh God, yeah. Like Steven Tyler looks <laughs> oh, like yeah. a grandmother. Look at Joni oh. Mitchell. She uh, yeah. doesn't even look like Joni Mitchell no. in well, my she's opinion. She's eighty-two. But oh, that's wow. what you said about older. I'm just but saying. But Elton John, right? Elton John. I mean, you look at Elton John today. He looks like an old granny. <laughs> I love Elton John. <laughs> I don't know about yeah, granny, he looks like but... an old granny. Well, I don't know. He looks like you know. <laughs> All right, I'll take these couple next two. We're looking 1976. Blue Oyster called land their biggest hit as Don't Fear the Reaper peaks at number 12 in the U.S., which is quite surprising because it should have gotten higher than that. Uh, this song is not about suicide, but about reuniting loved ones with uh, their loved ones in the afterlife. So, That's you know, when song. you really listen to the lyrics, it, that makes sense. It Don't really fear that. the Reaper. Yeah, you're going yeah. to visit your loved ones. That's right. You know, oh. I'll take the next one. 83, the ABC miniseries Princess Daisy debuts, featuring Ringo Starr as a gay fashion designer in one of his last acting roles. Ringo Starr. Ringo. As gay. How do you like the new Beatles video, by the way? Love it. 
Oh God, I haven't it, seen it. Oh, I posted it. We have to go on I, our page. I, mean, I posted I, I've been it. Sick. I saw it as soon as they released it, and then David beat me to posting it. And I'm telling you, you want to see a heart video. Really, when you look back at them and the way they, they the, the older images and newer images coming in and out and the meaning of the song, it, it's for me anyways, I, I found I, it very I, heart, a I, heart, heart place. I, I'm not saying it's the greatest Beatles song of no, all time, but no. I'm saying it's not bad. It, I rank it up there within the top 20 or 30 Beatles songs. And, and I always the video know, really you know, it's it. the third time you hear a song when you really get the hook. Pretty much, and usually. that's when the hook never leaves you after yeah. that. You know? Yeah, and if you don't, then it, that hook isn't there. You but know, you know what? To me, that video in combination, knowing yeah. what the song is about, yeah. right there, I love it. It, yeah. it, it didn't matter. Right. So when you see the video, watch it. It's on our page. I posted it. Well, actually, Dave posted it a few days back. Anyways, get to watch it. Watch it. It's amazing. 2012, they're a big day. U.S. President Barack Obama wins the election to serve a second term, and the news is greeted enthusiastically by Lady Gaga, Snoop Dogg, Cher, and many others. However, notoriously conservative Ted Nugent reigns <laughs> on the parade, Not Ted. posting scathing <laughs> comments on Twitter. Nugent unleashes a volley of insults against Obama supporters, calling them pimps, whores, welfare brats, subhuman varmints, <laughs> and even more derogatory oh terms. He's always been a little off the cuff Oh, just there, a little. Ted, Ted Nugent uh, gets things started before the results are in, tweeting, vote for Obama and vote for U.S. Constitution hating SCOTUS crazies. After Obama wins, the vitriol begins flowing through his keyboard. <laughs> what is subhuman varmint <laughs> believes Others must pay for their obesity, booze, cell phone, birth control, abortions, and lives, <laughs> followed by concise tweeting four more years with a photo of him embracing the First Lady Nugent, who was once dared the vile, evil, American-hating administration and said he will either be dead or in jail if Obama is president in very harsh terms. I don't think he liked the president too much. Months after Donald Trump takes office in 2017, Nugent gets a personal tour of the White House. <laughs> bada boom, bada bing. Yeah. No, there not a big shocker there. So. Okay, uh, so Tools, Intention, is a song which notorious, notoriously employed the use of backmasking, the technique of embedded reversible lyrics with a recording, within a recording, is a track um, the Intention song by progressive rock giants Tool. From their fourth studio album, 10,000 Days, Intention is a moody, rhythmic roller coaster. The backwards message can be clearly heard during the track's opening section. Far from advocating devil worship or encouraging us all to get up to no good, when played backwards, you can hear the following. Work hard, stay in school, listen to your mother. Your father was right. A wholesome enough message, but it has been said that the hidden lyrics are ironic, conveying ideas of anti-conformity. <laughs> wow. Oh, it, it amazes me when you have these hard rock bands. There's and, many and, that have done and, this. And, you know, when you listen to some of the rap stuff and hip-hop stuff out there, are you kidding me? These guys are nastier than any rock band I've ever, or <laughs> punk band or anything that I've ever heard. So they really need to change their direction on what they're saying is explicit or Well, like on our stations, like, we used to edit the word fuck out. And we don't do it anymore <gasps> because you know what? Uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's messing with a, uh, someone has written that and someone has performed well, it and you're cutting it up. Well, And I don't I, believe that people are as offended by the word fuck. As it's a word. Time. Well, I've always said this and I've said this to my kids growing up and stuff because they, they get mad or whatever. There's a, a ton of ways you can say the word fuck. Exactly. It can be derogatory. It can be uh, funny. It can be... There's so many different ways. Sexual. It, <laughs> sexual, whatever. Yeah. You know, when you look at Britain, they use the C word. I, well, I'm see, I don't like it. that one. No, that one I don't like. But here, that's but here, like but here that, that word to them is is normal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, it's Whereas, common language. Yeah. Like it, mm -hmm. when I, The first time I heard somebody calls a, a woman a cow... I was like, holy a gas, I was watching a British show, and oh, yeah, it's such a cow. 
you say oh, that to a, you say that to a Canadian woman, yeah, yeah. and it's wow, yeah, like th- th- you're gonna get kicked in the stones. No, it you know, doesn't so matter. It, they, they just... It's just that different uh, terminology. But again, yeah. like you said, Russ, fuck is just part of our vocabulary now. I find you know it's it's it, it is so. All right, moving on. Another little tidbit here, according to the Led Zeppelin biography ha- biography. Hammer of the Gods, while touring the UK in the 60s, Sonny Boy Williamson set his hotel room on fire by trying to cook a rabbit in the <laughs> coffee percolator. How high was he? Hey, man. Hey, there's no stove. He was yeah, hungry. He was hungry. <laughs> Found a rabbit outside, stuck under somebody's tire. Oh, uh, oh, God. oh, I don't think Ro- that was Ro- the case. Roadkill huh? Cafe. Uh, all right, jumping back to 1959. Smokey Robinson marries Claudette Rogers, a fellow member of the Miracles, and eventually the inspiration for his song, My Girl, made famous by my the Temptations. Girl, great song. My girl. Uh, my girl. girl. What a great my song. Girl. What a great song. <laughs> the radio station Casey, 94.7 in St. Louis, flips format from easy listening to rock uh, this week in 1967, starting with White Rabbit. And the move helps spread the sound and ethos of the counterculture to the Midwest. And Casey becomes a major force in the movement. Casey, giant radio station from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and and a several ground air checks of them from the past. But they've been rocking uh, St. Louis for... They've been rocking the Golden Archers for years, let's face it. Great station. I'll do one more. 1967, Elton John, still give, uh, going by his given name of Reg Dwight and songwriting partner Bernie Toppin signed their first major publishing deal. Their parents are there to witness the signing as both are still minors and Toppin answered an advertisement for a lyric writer placed in the New Musical Express. The pair have since collaborated on over 30 albums. And here's a little bit of trivia for you. Captain Fantastic on the Brown Dirt Cowboy is Captain Fantastic was Elton John and the Brown Dirt Cowboy was Bernie Bernie Toppin. Yeah. And well, Bernie just got uh, put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, it's about time. Oh, he, I didn't know that. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. About fucking okay. time. Absolutely. He was like, the backbone of Elvis, or uh, Elvis, of Elton John. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Like, he was he the lyricist. Wow, exactly. He, he wrote the lyrics to so almost every single he, hit. He should have been in there before Elton, yeah. but... Yeah. <laughs> There's not too many Doesn't albums that, that I have time to pull out nowadays and listen to, but Captain Fantastic is one. Yeah. One song yeah. after another on that album yeah. it takes me I back. Just, I was so happy to meet the guy. It just it yeah, was such yeah, a, yeah. A, yeah. an iconic event in my life that was just so spectacular. And I still, I, I remember it so vividly. So That's when yeah. you went to the dentist and you're eight years old. When yeah, your man, five. Your mom worked I was actually five, yeah. Capitol Records, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. At eight years old, meeting Elton John, my yeah. God. No, Anytime. it was, uh, I got to meet them and The Who and... Uh, when my mom was there and it was just I still yeah it was one of the greatest things I you know as a child the memory that just instantly comes back so so you and and um Miss Young Presley there would have gotten along great because that was her favorite too yeah yeah 1969 after Life magazine tracks down Paul McCartney at his farm in Scotland they put him on the cover with his family dispelling that Paul is dead rumors with the headline, Paul is still with us. McCartney drops his bombshell, the Beatle thing is over, and although the band hasn't announced their split, they are indeed fractured. Management struggles have taken their toll on the band, especially on McCartney, who went to Scotland to get away from it all. The crew from Life had to do a fair amount of searching to locate McCartney's farm, and at first he ran them off. Mm. Their effort was rewarded when he had a change of heart and granted them an interview and a photo shoot, a rare look into his private life. Can you spread it around that I'm just an ordinary person and want to live in peace, he Absolutely. says. They put their pants on the same way as we do. They go to the bathroom, they eat, they, they, they're they human. That Paul yeah. was dead, I think was made up by John. He wanted to promote the band I well I think it was yeah I think it was a, a let's spread controversy because yeah. it sells albums yeah. the problem was it got way out of hand more than they thought it was yeah, gonna happen I, I think so <laughs> yeah I agree I agree took it seriously. Yeah, I agree back so. in the day all they had was the news we didn't have like we do with technology and everybody can see and do and right so they got sucked in real quick yeah uh 2003 with tourism suffering because of SARS outbreak everybody remembers that 
The Hong Kong government hires the Rolling Stones to perform a concert there to assure people it's safe. Which it wasn't. Uh, the Rockers <laughs> played to 13,000 people at the city's Harbour Fest. That was amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I was at SARS Fest here. So it was that here in Downsview. Uh, yeah, I was. And, it was. It was um, good. It was really good. I, I was fortunate enough to, to be backstage and, and well, meet, meet a few other people. And But uh, what a crazy, uh, massive event that was. It was just insane to look out. And see I was how... in the first quarter of people, so okay. I was we got there right really there. early. Yeah. But it was fun because it, it kind of took you back because you get around the beer tents. There was actually women with shirts off running through the oh, water yeah. showers. Oh, yeah. So you were kind of going back to what it was. Because ladies remember. Woodstock, kind of really little version. It you is know? legal to be topless in Ontario, so. Oh, and it was hot as hell that day, yeah. especially well, when you're was, in that crowd. Well, <laughs> oh, let me tell you. <laughs> stupid hot that day. All right, I'll do this one too, and then we'll bump it over to Big Daddy. Taken from the seminal concept album, The Wall, Empty Spaces is one of the few examples of rock songs which contain genuine hidden message, purposely placed with the track by Roger's Wa uh, Roger Waters. Listen to the song and you'll hear, congratulations, you've just discovered the it. secret message. Please send your answer to Old Pink, <laughs> care of Funny Farm. Chalfont. Chalfont, right. The prevailing opinion is that the intended recipient of the message is former Pink Floyd band member Sid Barrett. It is said that the lead character Pink, who is the conceptual focus of the album, uh, uh, what they call a road-worn rock star who's fallen into obscurity, is more than passing nod to Barrett himself. And I, that's a link that's actually on the... Um, on the page. On the page. So you if you go on, yeah. you can click on it. You can actually hear. Right. Yeah. What it says. Yeah. In 1980, Led Zeppelin drummer John Bonham, you've heard of him, was forced no. to abandon a gig no. in Nuremberg, Germany, due to crippling stomach cramps after he had consumed 27 <laughs> bananas before showtime. That was a Who dare. Who eats that, that many that, bananas? That had to be a dare. That had to be, has to be something. Who eats 27? You, one banana will blind you right up. About 27. 27. Can you imagine trying to push that through your system? Oh, my, oh my God. God. But I love bananas. Oh, me too. Oh, with God, yeah. with me sugar. Too. Peanut and butter and peanut banana. Butter. Oh, my uh, Elvis God. Elvis's favorite. Uh, That's my peanut absolute peanut favorite. Peanut butter and banana sandwiches, man. Oh, oh just peanut. No, just a banana and just put the peanut butter oh. on it. And people laugh, but don't knock it till you try it. Absolutely. It's very good. Beautiful. 1971, Led Zeppelin released their fourth album with no title printed on the album and generally referred to as four symbols. The fourth album, or Led Zeppelin, it has gone on to sell over 37 million copies worldwide. Of course, everyone has that album. Yeah. A 19th century rustic oil painting in the front of the album was purchased by Robert Plant from an antique shop in Reading, Berkshire, in the UK. And the 20th century urban tower block on the back of the full gatefold LP cover is Butterfield Court in Eves Hill, Dudley, Dudley. in England. So it's a very British album cover. Very much so. And, uh, I wonder why. Yeah. Uh, well, a, a little <laughs> background to that. Well, they, of course, they're British and whatever. But where they recorded that album was an actual castle. And John Bonham was at the bottom of a staircase playing... Yeah, well, there's the pictures. Band, there's, yeah. there's, I've seen one yeah. picture. Where the band is yeah. upstairs. Well, to boot, Adele, when she did Rolling the Hills, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her drummer and their band did it in that same place. The oh, same cool. way Led that. Zeppelin did that. Oh, that's cool. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. The drummer was in the exact same spot. The band was upstairs and they recorded it that exact same way. This so they must have known is, about it and decided to check it out. Oh, yeah. This Obviously. isn't a very good story to talk about, but we have to yes. uh, uh, tell Still you. Still part of history. 1974. I love Connie Francis. So it, do I. A darling. She went through a hell of a time through this. Uh, really. Of course, one of the biggest stars of the 60s is attacked in her Howard oh. Johnson's hotel room and raped at knife point. Devastated by the attack, she doesn't perform for another seven years. Imagine. Two years later, she was awarded more than $2 million in her lawsuit against the hotel chain. Right on. And well, yeah, because he should never have had access. No, how the hell did he get in? How did he get in there? But, you know, such you a know? sweet lady, and it knocked her off her feet. Only uh, for 
a time though yeah. she bounced back and that's what yeah. it's all about is well that's you know, the whole thing is that she's a strong lady absolutely. she went through that but she was probably the biggest voice in the early 60s yeah late 50s. i could tend to agree on oh, that as far time. as females go yeah. big time uh, her and patsy klein of course yeah. you can't say you know but connie was and she's still gorgeous she's 80 some odd year, but just the kind of guy you want to go up and give her a big hug you know? yeah beautiful gal David Bowie, this week in 1975, made his U.S. TV debut performing Fame. Great song. I love that song. On the sure. Cher CBS TV show. And Bowie, who was living in the New York area at the time, had written the song with John Lennon during a jamming session. A lot of people didn't know that. No, but uh, the thing Lennon. I liked about David Bowie uh, is the fact that he changed with every decade. Yeah. He changed. He went from... He was oh, really, gotcha. he was very much pop in the 60s because he was known as David Jones back in, uh, Davy Jones, I believe. That, that yeah. Of course, the monkeys, so he had to change his name. But he was pop and then he went to rock and then he went to psychedelic. And but I mean, went. it wasn't even just the music. His, the way he looked, yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything changed consistently. He was a genius. You know? He was oh, a genius. Was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And him and Peter Frampton were best friends. People don't know that, but they were very best friends. And Peter Frampton's having yeah. some difficulty with. Uh, a few yeah, he's problems. got a. Uh, yeah, he's got dog. some he's issues got a guide right dog now. now. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Actually, he just it just know. he just got it. Well, when I at, literally, look at, literally. Look at, look, look at Phil Collins. Yeah. Poor guy. He's got. Uh, he's got MS. He's yeah. he's not doing well. Yeah. You know? and, when I close my yeah, eyes, they're just I like see us, Frampton. right? They're susceptible to this stuff too. Frampton comes alive when I close my eyes. I see Peter there. I see the album cover. And the big, the big curly hair. Curly hair. That was, hey, I love that album. Do you feel like we do? What a with, classic. I love that with album. With the tube in his mouth. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ramping Comes Alive. Yeah. yeah, just a fantastic live album. 1987, generating footage for their Rattle and Hum documentary, U2 play a free Save the Yuppie concert at Justin Herman Plaza in San Francisco. An arrest warrant is issued for Bono after he spray paints Rock and roll stops traffic on fountain sculpture. <laughs> oh, well, I actually put a picture is, of it up. But it, it was, is vandalism, really. Well, like, it is. Anybody, anybody else, else did it, yeah. they're in jail. Anybody so. else does it, they're getting in shit. And right? you can't deny it. There's photos all over the yeah, internet, so yeah. you can't deny it. So tragedy strikes in 2012 at a Lincoln Park concert in Cape Town, South Africa, when high oh, winds goodness. caused scaffolding to collapse. This sends an advertisement tower plummeting into the ground, the crowd of fans in the parking lot after the show, killing one and injuring 19 more. Yeah, yeah it was a mess. Yeah, I remember that. It was a mess. So, all right, moving on to some more tidbits here. What sinister good. message could this possibly be hiding within the vinyl grooves of this iconic song? Innocuous. Innocuous as it may <laughs> seem, Stairway to Heaven, taken from the album Led Zeppelin uh, 4, does indeed make the top list of rock songs with allegedly hidden satanic messages. The oddity of the song's lyrics can be written off as a uh, bioproduct of the 70s excess, but when reversed, they do indeed sound present one or two lines to give the church-going folks cause for concern. And then again, power of suggestion is a wonderful thing. So, you know what? Keep going. There's the lyric yeah. then. That's what oh, it yeah. says. So... Ooh, here's to my sweet Satan. The whole little path would make me so sad. Whose power is Satan? He'll give you 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, said Satan. Sad Satan. Or, yeah, or sad. And that's the link. And Satan. if you go to it, it's actually a clip yeah. and it just shows you right at the point. And then you can hear, but it actually, it actually says that. Yeah. No, it's just... Crazy. People, people have way too much time on their hands. Well, the problem, the thing is, is they do, they put it in with that backspace. All right. I mean, yeah. they, uh, there's a handful. I've got a few of them in here, and there's quite a few that actually use that machinery and yeah. put li put oh, this yeah. type of stuff in their songs. And many did not know, especially with, well, with Stairway to Heaven, nobody had a clue. And especially at that time, people didn't think they had the technology, but they did. Yeah. So. Queen, right. dr Queen drummer Roger Taylor made the most inspired decision during the recording sessions for Bohemian Rhapsody, which is a classic. Uh, he locked cool. himself in a recording studio it. tape cupboard where until everything agreed, <laughs> everyone agreed that the B-side could be his song, I'm in love with my car. Taylor's track automatically sold a copy every time someone bought Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. with consequential royalties. 
He wasn't stupid. That's one but, way to do it. Well, he yeah. locked himself in a tape cupboard. Can yeah. you imagine? And he and apparently it wasn't for an hour. Oh. He or they not. were they weren't going to go for it, and he said, "Ben, I'm fine. I'm not coming out. You want to you want to play? You do your thing. I'm not leaving." People need to know <laughs> that back then the tapes were made with a lot of chemicals. So being in that yeah. room, he was exposed to a lot. Little cupboard. Yeah, well, that's I mean, a lot of chemicals, man. Like it's, whoo, the smell in there must have been brutal. 1962 this week in Birmingham, Alabama, two gunshots hit the side of the tour bus transporting Motown's Motortown Review. As black acts were not welcomed by everyone in the Deep South at that point, the show at the National Guard Armory marks the first time in the city's history that an integrated audience is allowed for a concert. Pretty I'm so sad. glad we're not at that stage anymore. God, am I ever glad. Big time, man. You know, Ronnie Hawkins, uh, I used to know Ronnie, and uh, he used to tell me the stories. And he used to get shot at down in Arkansas in the old days with because the, they, they didn't like him. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he said, you never ran so fast as you know a guy chasing you with a great big pistol. God, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that really did happen back in those days. And thank God, like you said, we're not like that anymore. Well, for the most part. Do you want me to read one more? Yeah, in 1966, go for it. John Lennon visits London's Indicate Gallery to see the exhibit Unfinished, unfinished Paintings Excuse and me. Objects and meets the artist behind the showing <laughs> Yoko Ono. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, she presents him with a card that simply says, Breathe, and he responds by panting. Well, of course, John would do something like that. Uh, he attempts to hammer a nail into one of her interactive artworks, <laughs> which invites viewers to do just that, since the exhibit does not open to the public till the next day. However, Ono refuses, leading the gallery's owner to beg her to reconsider due to John's fame. Well, Yoko nope. still refuses, claiming to <laughs> never have heard of the Beatles, but <laughs> says he can hammer one in for five shillings. <laughs> John responds that he'll let her have an imaginary five shillings if he can hammer in an imaginary nail. Two years later, the two meet again and quickly fell in love. Like, can, you can just see the dynamic between them right oh, off yeah. the, right off the oh, hop yeah. with that happening, eh? Oh, yeah. and, and Yoko being like, no, no, I don't care how famous he is. doesn't matter to me. That's she right. was a lot older than him. Uh, she's got to be in her 90s now. 80s, late 80s. 80, yeah, 80s, so. I think. Late 80s, I think, yeah. is where she is now. Yeah. All right, Leah, 67. So in the Battle of Egos, the Birds, Roger McGinn, boots David Crosby from the group. Crosby is replaced by Gene Clark and goes on to form Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Which became yeah. much bigger. Yeah. 100%. It's amazing how that happens, eh? The, the irony Meant of to it be. All. Yeah. Then in 1998, Rick James suffers a stroke after a blood vessel I'm rupture in his neck while he is headbanging during a performance in Denver, Colorado. A spokesman, a spokesman later comments the doctor called it a result of rock and roll neck, the repeated rhythmic back whiplash motion of the head and neck. Yeah, I right. believe maybe, it too. Chuck Berry could tell you. Mine, uh, was, mine was in my neck too. So. Angus Young. Uh, Chuck, How the heck did he not get something like that? Chuck you never Berry. see him not. Chuck yeah. Berry. Oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Metal bands, Metallica, Iron Maiden, all that stuff. They, they do. all do, but it just—I you know. look at Angus Young, and I don't think you ever see his face when he plays. Not really. No. <laughs> Between the hair going and. I'm going. I'm glad you're reading this one, not me. Uh yeah. Okay, I'll take this one. Uh, according <laughs> to Little Richard himself, uh, put the kids away for this. Tutti frutti. Uh, Tutti frutti is a song about anal sex between <laughs> two men. Just so you know. The original uh, lyrics went like this. A wop bop a loop mop a good goddamn <laughs> tutti frutti good booty. <laughs> if it if it don't, don't fit, fit, don't force it, you can grease it and make it easy. <laughs> I'm never going to look at that song <laughs> so, the same way again. I knew you two would like that one. <laughs> so, I had to put it in. I had to. <laughs> now that that's been said. You, c you couldn't ask for anything more wholesome than Tutti Frutti in a rock and roll radio I, station. And I now, am so glad we're not that. censored. <laughs> because that's I fucking hilarious. I had to do yeah. it. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, going to move on because we got to get going here. We're already at uh, half an hour. Bono's... Uh, whose real name is Paul Hewson, got his nickname from a hearing aid store. It's yeah. Latin for good voice, but Vox is a feminine <laughs> word, so he dropped it just for bon, uh, Bono. Bono, obviously. So, yeah. That's how Bono came about.
Yeah. Nope. A little bit of history trivia. November the 10th, uh, 1958, Billboard magazine reports that Dick Clark's American Bandstand show on ABC is the hottest merchandising opportunity on television, noting that sales of beechnut gum have doubled since the company began buying ad space on the program. And I remember those old beechnut gum Beach ad nut gum. Same 1967, the Beatles filmed three separate videos for their new single, Hello Goodbye, at London's Seville Theatre, or Savile. Seville, I believe. Seville. Uh, the three are eventually edited together to form one video, but the BBC, which has just given in to the Musicians Union, ban on lip syncing, refuses to air the clip. You see Not what I mean? the BBC. I mean, yeah. the BBC, they kick themselves in the ass every time. I'll do one more. 2013 at the MTV Europe Awards, Miley Cyrus smokes a joint while accepting her best video award for a wrecking ball. <laughs> the ceremony is held in Amsterdam. So it's legal. Right Way on. to go. And she, girl, she's Miley. now actually clean now. She's, she's a great uh, She's girl. really cleaned up her act and uh, she's doing really well. And, and I love that because, it, you know, when we see all these child stars, whether they're musicians, actors, whatever, and, and, and the shit that they go through. Uh, and end Through up, media, you know, yeah, especially. Like, like none uh, of us ever had any you of know, that stuff, You know, don't get me right? wrong. She's had some conflicts and stuff like that, but... She's pulled through it all, and she's done really well for herself. So I, I grew up with a lot of people that had a lot of different things that these famous people have had. Just leave them alone. Let Absolutely. them grow up and let them Again, do their thing. Again, they're human. They're the same as we are. They're no different. You do this one. No, you do this no, one. No, you, you finish do it off. You finish it off. You no, sure? You do, you do it. <clears throat> all right. 2017, following a publicity campaign where she purges her social media accounts and posts video of a hissing snake, Taylor Swift releases her sixth album, Reputation. Swift, who signed her first record deal at 15, quickly developed a reputation for being sensitive and kind, as well as pre preternaturally talented. But in 2016, she made some enemies, notably Kanye West, who betrayed her trust by rapping, I Made That Bitch Famous, in his song, Famous, and putting a naked Swift lookalike in the video. This after Swift presented him with the 2015 MTV Video Vanguard, Vanguard Award, where she said, Kanye West has had one of the greatest careers of all time. I remember seeing that too with that award. And it wasn't just the famous people who were trolling Taylor. Social media teamed with posts accusing her of duplicity and likening her to a snake. All of this informed the first Reputation single, Look What You Made, Look what you made, look what you made me do. Where she buries the old Taylor and blasts her haters. Turning the snake comments upside down, Swift uses a giant inflatable cobra named Karen on her reputation tour. It serves as a warning. She will bite if stepped on. It ends up being her last album with the Big Machine Records because the label she first signed with in 2018, she ends, she ends up moving to the Republic Records and a year later released Lover, an album that puts the ordeals that inspired reputation behind her. Uh, Which is stuck to her. I, I have to say something about Taylor Swift. She's okay. I mean, I'm not, oh, yeah. she's pretty. She has a great voice. I just don't get it. No, I, I don't either. Don't, right. uh, but some people but would again, say that of the music we like too. But it, again, it's it's the yeah. hype. It's the hype that they build behind it all. It doesn't matter whether it's Justin Bieber. It doesn't matter whether it's Kanye. Whether what? It's the hype they build behind it all. And if you've got a great, yeah. uh, you know, publicist, a pro publicist promotional organization, good or bad, they throw it out there because it's promotion, and it gets attention. And you know, same thing here. I I I, I don't discredit her at all she she's a, a good writer and, and stuff like that but there's a lot better uh, musicians out there and a lot better pieces of music and all that in my opinion but, well, but at the same time she's by, she's yeah. also in a genre of music i personally don't listen to well, again, yeah so it, i mean in terms of what we listen to there are other people that uh, amanda you might you might be one of those come on over well, yeah, in terms of work, Taylor Swift, stuff. she's more, I think, some of the stuff you would listen to. Yeah, Amanda's younger. Music. What do you think of yeah. Taylor Swift? Seriously. Taylor Swift? Yeah. She's pretty good. As and that's a, what I said. As a this, singer, she yeah. is a, she is and then, a again, really good singer. Era, genre. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And it's yeah. just not our thing. But Any, Anybody could say that, you know, early era, Janis Joplin, blah, 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 you know. 
every area you go through, you, well, you go we through have the those. area. Okay, let's, yeah. let's, let's go through. We'll go and through. I'm stuck in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> no, we got to that. wrap up here. Bing so. Crosby, Sinatra, then you've got Elvis, then you've got the Beatles, then you've got the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, I guess. Then you've got Elton John and you've got Madonna. Excuse now me? you've got Excuse Taylor me? Swift. Excuse me? Love yeah. Zeppelin's in there. Well, yeah, well, I didn't well, yeah, hear that. I, yeah, well, again. <laughs> Again, it's just you know, it, it it's it is it's it's a uh, and music to me is no different than anybody's opinion on religion, uh, his politics, and uh, uh, any of that stuff. So to each their own. That's absolutely, right. you know. That's and, why I brought and you if in that's here, and if that's you're what brings you, that era, if that's so, what yeah. brings you peace in life and makes you smile and sing along, who cares? Do and it. enjoy, do it. Absolutely, do it. I don't Whatever care if it, what it is. Your heart, absolutely. Your soul, if it's good, do it. feels good. Do Music it twice. is good for your soul, no matter who you are, how old you are, and what you do. Why are you are staring you, at me like that? Are you friends with Little Richard? Tutti Fruity. Tutti Fruity. Oh, Rudy. Oh. I will never hear that song again. In the I same, know. That, in the same way. It's stuck in my head now. Well, you and said if you believe it and it feels good, do it twice. I thought no. maybe you. Now, still can you stuck imagine? They wouldn't Richard. even let. They wouldn't even let Elvis move his hips in the fifties. Can you imagine? No, he'd use his finger when the cop would yeah. watch him on stage. Oh, one time. let me out of here. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Be safe, and we'll catch everybody on the B side.